Your talk is here? Ah, yes, yours? this is the one. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Ah, don't worry. No, no, sorry. I just closed. So sorry. Okay. Please. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. So sorry. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Now yeah, no, okay. that's better. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Anastasios. Anastasios Belias, that's short. You are from Greece? I'm Greek. I'm from oh, Greece. Okay. I know Greek. I know Greece. Okay, um, Anastasios Belias. Yes, I. Yeah. <clears throat> One minute. Does that make sense? Excellent. Okay, I have an announcement. First, there is a small change in regard to the dinner. We will not be free anymore. It's just a joke. It's all right. <laughs> Okay, maybe I can start the section this morning with uh, Professor Anastasio Bella from GSI. Great. To speak about the Panta Detect, please. Thank you, thank you. Um, from GIA, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, thank you for inviting me uh, uh, to give a talk here, this very exciting and interesting workshop. Um, so uh, the title of the uh, presentation this morning is uh, uh, The Panda Detector and FAIR. It's uh, uh, the detector of the uh, panda experiment you've been hearing about uh, in previous uh, uh, talks uh, these days. Um, so it's not the detector for detecting panda bears. <laughs> the um, uh, outline of the talk is uh, uh, um, fairly short. We'll be giving an update date on the uh, antiprotons, antiproton generation and FAIR, uh, the panda detector, an overview, and then uh, specifically go into the details of the various subsystems. And uh, uh, in particular, I will uh, uh, try to outline what the status is of the various subsystems and uh, uh, give you uh, uh, an outline of the schedule. And um, in particular, at the end, um, highlight and point out some of the opportunities which uh, uh, some of you uh, uh, would like uh, uh, um, to um, take on and uh, may, might find it interesting. Okay, so we've seen this before. It's the facility for anti-proton ion research fair uh, near Darmstadt, Germany at GSI. And this is in uh, blue, the existing facility, GSI, and in red, 
what is uh, uh, meant to be built for FAIR, notably the large ring accelerator, SIS-100, uh, uh, the various transfer lines, the beam lines, the collector ring, and the anti-proton ring, the uh, high energy storage ring, HESR, where the PANDA experiment will be located there. Um, all this is happening uh, uh, near Darmstadt, so that's uh, close by. There's meant to be a, uh, uh, a little sign there. It's a very large airport nearby, so it's very easy to come and go from this place and uh, collaborate there. Um, the facility, uh, the fair facility is really a, a, a very large step forward for GSI as it uh, accelerates uh, uh, beams, uh, uh, particle beams from antiprotons uh, all over to uh, uranium ions. Uh, uh, there's a huge increase uh, of uh, intensities for the beams and uh, uh, rare isotopes. And uh, so this is a list of uh, uh, um, features which the FAIR facility will be uh, uh, able to provide for experiments. Uh, also, we've heard already uh, the first day of the uh, four research pillars, uh, uh, APA, CBM, SuperFRS, and notably PANDA. And this is what uh, we'll be looking at uh, today in more detail um, in the uh, detector technology for uh, PANDA. So the anti-proton production there uh, will start uh, FAIR with the proton Linux of 70 MeV anti-protons. Uh, uh, which will be accelerated first to the CIS-18 and then uh, transferred over to CIS-100, um, as you can see with the uh, arrows here. And then uh, uh, there will be uh, uh, protons will be then impinged on, on a uh, copper target impinging to produce the anti-protons uh, following this transfer line there. Then they will be focused and transferred over to the collector, collector ring, collection and fast cooling. Um, while uh, in the initial plans there was the accumulation in the uh, RESR, recycler uh, storage ring, for slow cooling and then transfer to HESR. At the beginning, though, the uh, storage will be in the HESR uh, in order for, uh, for the uh, antiprotons to be used in PANNA. So the, um, uh, these antiprotons will then uh, uh, be, will be uh, available in the high energy storage ring. Um, uh, in Panda at uh, 2 times 10 to the 32 uh, centimeters for uh, luminosity. They, uh, there are very, various star versions, the modularized start version, so to speak, which uh, the FAIR facility will uh, start with. And, uh, of course, uh, as we uh, heard uh, also from previous speakers, antiprotons are unique probes. Um, it's a new dimension uh, at FAIR with respect to GSI. This has not been there before. Hadron physics, which will bridge uh, the uh, um, uh, nuclear and high-intensity uh, high physics to basic QCD. Uh, there is no other uh, antiproton facility worldwide be operating uh, at these intensities. Uh, the successful predecessors have demonstrated that there is a large potential. And of course, the uh, unique precision of the high energy storage ring is that there will be a, a beam cooling stochastically in the sense that we will have very low energy spreads of uh, down to 50 keV of the beam and the possibility to tune the center of mass of the beam, uh, which will be very interesting and important to scan particular resonances and to produce particles uh, annihilation of threshold. Right, so the, here's a sketch of the high energy storage ring. It's a uh, uh, large uh, uh, racetrack ring, the two uh, 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 straight sections. And uh, over here, all the magnets. You can see the legend here, all the dipole, quadrupole, sextopole magnets, and steering magnets. Um, the Panda experiment will be located on one of the uh, stretches here, the straight sections. Uh, the circumference is about 575 meters. The momentum range, which uh, uh, will be uh, capable to deliver the antiprotons, will be in the range of 1.5 to 15 GeV over C. Um, is, uh, electron cooling is foreseen at a later stage, but stochastic cooling is foreseen uh, right from the start over the full range, over the full uh, momentum range. There are two typical uh, uh, running modes which are envisaged and uh, uh, are being uh, uh, shown here, the high luminosity mode and high resolution mode. So they differ in the uh, momentum spread, delta, delta P over P, uh, while they, uh, it's a higher resolution in the HR mode. The number of uh, the luminosity is, is 10 times, at least 10 times higher in the high luminosity mode uh, um, for the antiprotons. So the number of stored antiprotons is 10 to the 11 and 10 to the 10 here. Um, 
they, uh, the beginning, uh, 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 anyway, uh, uh, for commissioning the machines and uh, the accelerators, but also uh, understanding the detectors, uh, uh, the luminosities will be not be the very large ones, uh, but sufficient in order to uh, commission the uh, detectors properly. Um, okay, this is a transparency showing exactly this uh, case of the possibility of having the high resolution mode, certainly a very, very narrow uh, beam spread in energy. And so it's possible in the PP bar collision for direct production of various states. And there, here's a sketch of how uh, uh, center, along the center of mass energy, uh, the various uh, uh, resonance scans can be made in order to uh, identify an underlying resonance. Okay, so uh, let's then uh, move to PANDA itself. So PANDA, uh, PANDA as such stands for Anti-Proton Annihilation in Darmstadt, um, so that we know uh, uh, what we're talking about here. So, so the Anti-Proton Annihilation in Darmstadt, and it's a logo here. Um, regarding the physics objectives, we did hear quite a few. Okay, I see <laughs> you didn't know that, right? <laughs> um, uh, you see uh, a, 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 the landscape, if you like, of uh, uh, various physics objectives sketched um, here, uh, ranging from spectroscopy to nuclear structure measurements, uh, uh, nuclear physics strangeness, um, bound states of strong interaction is the overall umbrella, if you like, under which these various physics objectives uh, uh, can be found. We heard already about hyperon and uh, uh, um, physics yesterday, and we will hear about X, Y, Z states and uh, other searches uh, during this workshop as well. Now, the goals, of course, what the Panda detector will do is the hadron spectroscopy at various levels and the various uh, uh, um, um, probing exotic QCD states, spectroscopy with antiprotons, hadron structures as well, uh, uh, time like nuclear form factors, which were addressed in questions and uh, elsewhere in this, uh, this workshop. And of course, a large range of uh, nuclear physics, in particular also hypernuclei, uh, production of double uh, lambda hypernuclei, as we heard yesterday already. Um, hadrons in nuclear medium and many other. As I say, this is a physics called sketch. So, uh, and this is a sketch of a detector which looks very uh, close to the one which we'll be proposing, but uh, let's say, uh, uh, a look at the detector requirements, which are important in order to do to reach this kind of physics goal. So uh, definitely a, a very large, a very hermetic acceptance, four pi acceptance around the interaction region. Um, high rate capabilities, uh, we're expecting uh, the order of 10 to the 7 interactions per second. Um, efficient event selection and continuous acquisition. The um, nature of the signatures, the event signatures there, uh, such that uh, you cannot upfront um, uh, consider having any hardware trigger, any triggering really at all. So it's really continuous reading. And then online event selection on the fly, so, so to speak, before committing uh, data to tape. Um, the uh, momentum resolution of the order of 1%, vertexing for long -living, uh, longer living particles, at least the K0 showed here, the Y for, of, uh, of uh, 300 micrometers. Here we see, for example, the D plus minus. Very good tracking, good tracking, very good tracking, although uh, in a large volume around the interaction region. Uh, good uh, uh, particle identification, gammas, electrons, muons, pions, kaons, protons. Um, there uh, we utilize a lot of the Cherenkov radiation, time of flight, DNVX measurements, and uh, excellent uh, uh, photon detection in the region of interest of um, as low as MeV to uh, uh, a size 10 GeV. Uh, using a, uh, um, a crystal calorimeter. So these are just the requirements, and of course, um, eventually, those then translate to this, which we've seen already in the, the first talk, right? I mean, what we need, something which can do everything. Um, and then uh, uh, people, uh, like uh, uh, many of us do, uh, design experiments, subdetectors, readouts, and then uh, eventually, uh, together with uh, all the colleagues working um, on this, uh, uh, we come up with a uh, design, the Panda detector here. You see it in full, as much as possible, like I put up here. Um, you see all subsystems here. This is uh, what will be eventually there. 
Um, some of the systems will be there earlier, some of them later. This we will see at the schedule later on. Um, but it's a, um, it's a, uh, a, a detector which has the interaction point here in the middle. It's about 12 meter long and um, has the anti-proton beam coming here from the uh, left. And uh, as I said, the interaction point here, the, the target material, the target is then injected here. So it's basically uh, uh, capable to inject its own target, having its own internal fixed target in there. The region around the interaction point uh, also uh, is uh, called the target spectrometer, um, as it has a large magnet here and it's around the target. And everything which is then after the target spectrometer, is what we call the uh, forward spectrometer. And you see uh, uh, with the color denoted here, the spectrometer of the forward region, uh, we use this large dipole here. And uh, uh, for the target spectrometer, we have a solenoid uh, uh, magnet in here. Now, um, I will step now into the various parts, start with the magnets which uh, will be used, uh, uh, this is the solenoid magnet for the target spectrometer. This will be a superconducting coil of two Tesla central field. Uh, as you see here uh, depicted in the field, uh, uh, um, picture of the field lines. Uh, it will have a segmented coil for the target. So the coils will be segmented here so that a target pipe can go through there, which will be, uh, which is necessary of course to define the interaction region. Uh, the yoke will be instrumented classically, typically, for those of you who know, the, uh, with uh, muon detectors for the PID for, for muon and other particles. Uh, and then there will be doors at the end there also laminated and instrumented as well with muon for a muon range system, uh, which will be, of course, also retractable. And here you see some of the dimensions of the inner bore. It's about two meter high uh, in diameter and uh, uh, 2.7 meters long. The outer yoke is about here. The total weight of it is 300 tons. Um, so the uh, uh, status, the design and production contract with the Budka Institute of Nuclear Physics uh, has started and is well underway. Uh, there is a strong cooperation also with CERN regarding the cold mass. It's the dewar to uh, uh, have the solenoid uh, magnet uh, uh, being uh, um, superconducting. Um, conductor production is being in a development. We uh, uh, um, we're thinking to uh, buy a conductor from uh, well-known companies which have supplied other magnets, likewise at CERN, but unfortunately they're not available anymore. So there's a joint venture with the Budka Institute and Russian Institutes to actually uh, uh, build our own conductor there. Um, and the yoke production has started. As you will see in the next picture, there's a nice uh, uh, photo of it. So the dipole magnet, that's a normal conducting racetrack design, two Tesla meter. So you see here, this is a cutout view of it. Um, it's in the forward uh, region, and uh, there are some forward tracking detectors partly integrated within it and on, the, on, the, on either side of it. Um, of course, it bends also the beam, so eventually this will, uh, has become a, a component of the very accelerator, the AGSR. Um, and the status with it is a uh, contract, design contract, again, with the uh, Budka Institute of the, uh, uh, Nuclear Physics. Um, you see here the acceptance in... Uh, uh, Vertical and horizontal, five degrees, 10 degrees, a total weight of about 200 tons. Um, if we move on, here you have a picture. This is uh, actually the first octant of the uh, a yoke, which is being produced uh, uh, at the Budka Institute. And uh, uh, I think we are now already uh, at the, uh, they are now produced in, in series, and I think we are already uh, producing the sixth of the eight octants in order to make the full yoke uh, for the target spectrometer. Interaction region, now with uh, uh, having an interaction region to, which is being defined here through the beam pipe. This is the beam pipe, and then you have a, uh, the target pipe here. Um, this is the region, of course, very, very important, where eventually the antiprotons will uh, uh, impinge on the, uh, on the uh, protons here, or any other target material they, uh, uh, we have, uh, we can put here through uh, um, other gases, noble gases, if you like. Um, it's a two meters, uh, uh, two meter uh, um, length um, stretch where the vacuum has to be uh, uh, quite strong, of course. There are vacuum pumps defined at either end. 
This is a joint work, of course, with a Panda detector uh, um, collaboration and the uh, accelerator uh, physicists of the AGSR. Uh, the vacuum systems, pumps, shutters, all, most of them have been defined and their position defined. And the beam pipe, the target cross, the flanges as well are being uh, reviewed and defined. There are interfaces, of course, with the detectors at the target level here because there will be detectors being situated all around here concentrically as we walk out. Uh, there will be support for the pipe in case there are some services required for particular detectors or maybe not. This will uh, we have to see. And uh, um, there's also uh, uh, various space frames which are close to the beam, uh, the target pipe, uh, um, which hold the uh, various detectors. Um, Panda targets. Now, um, we have uh, uh, right up, uh, we will start with the so-called cluster jet target, um, which is uh, uh, basically uh, 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 can, has achieved already in its uh, 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 prototype tests uh, the record of 2 times 10 to the 15 um, uh, protons per, per centimeter squared already achieved. Uh, this is a continuous development. This target uh, system is now being tested at uh, COSI in Jülich. And uh, uh, the continuous development includes the various uh, uh, geometric considerations of the nozzles, which are used here, and uh, uh, better alignment for tilting devices and the monitoring of the uh, gas jet stream there. Uh, later on, for high luminosities and still in uh, the design is the uh, so-called pellet target uh, to achieve uh, uh, higher uh, densities there. Uh, the prototypes are underway. Uh, there is a prototype uh, uh, being put together and um, um, the technical design report is not yet uh, uh, there, but this is something which will be used in Panda later on and not uh, right at the beginning. Uh, whereas for the cluster jet target, the technical design report has been approved by the FAIR Experts Committee for Experiments, something which each subsystem has to go through to be reviewed. Some of you who know uh, uh, other places like SIR and Fermilab all do these kind of uh, design reviews by uh, independent, um, independent experts. So um, there are three aspects which I would like to go through regarding the detector. Uh, one is tracking, the other one is the calorimetry, and the third one is the uh, particle identification. Um, so in each of these aspects, I'll highlight, show you the detector, and you see um, where tracking occurs with uh, what subsystem, and we will see in the, uh, 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 some of the status and some of the information of the subsystem for each of those highlighted here. So uh, closest to the beam pipe, there's the microvertex detector. It's a silicon uh, tracking device. Further out then, immediately after, the volume there is occupied by a straw tube tracker. Then we have still in the target spectrometer within the solenoid, the gem tracker, which is over here, the three foils, three stations. And then in the forward region, um, around the uh, dipole magnet, the uh, forward uh, straw trackers. At the far end, about 11, 12 meters uh, uh, out uh, along the, after the interaction point, 11 meters, there's a so-called luminosity detector, which is also a tracker device uh, which can uh, uh, um, um, measure the uh, tracks of the, uh, the protons and the antiprotons. So the oops, microvertex detector is based on a silicon pixels and strip detectors. It's got a geometry. Uh, around the interaction point of several barrels, four barrels and six discs. Um, here you see the arrangement and uh, uh, the size of it is really uh, a small detector. As you can see, it's about 13.5 uh, uh, centimeters uh, radius here and uh, uh, 20 centimeters. So it's really a small and compact device. And of course, um, it has the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, very pixels and, and strips, uh, silicon strips of which, uh, uh, um, which are read out with ASICs, the one uh, being the topics ASICs uh, uh, defi uh, designed by the Torino uh, uh, colleagues, and the other one, uh, double-sided strips, a readout ASIC pasta. Um, in the very forward part of this detector, there is a mixture of pixels and strips uh, looking for the vertex resolution to be of the order of 50 micrometers, and uh, 
a momentum resolution there of uh, about 2%. The challenge is, of course, if you're so close to the uh, interaction region, is the uh, uh, support should have no mass, low mass. Um, the cooling in small volume is a big issue. And uh, of course, the radiation tolerance, this is you are at the heat of the, uh, of the happening here, uh, should be of the order of uh, 10 to the 14 neutron uh, 1 MeV equivalent per centimeter square. Um, the status, uh, uh, the TDI is approved for this device. The ASIC prototypes have been, first prototypes have been uh, tested as far as possible, and then some of them had to be adapted. Um, in order to be withstand the radiation, we use radiation tolerant, we will use radiation tolerant links from CERN and other uh, uh, um, radiation tolerant components, the CDC converters, which are radiation tolerant, the FEAST, the Versatile Link, and of course the GBTX. Detailed service planning is ongoing. Um, what you see here is the beam pipe, actually. So, so, so the, this detector is further up here. And all this, what you see here, are the CDC converters and GBDXs, which are arranged around the beam pipe. And of course, this puts some weight on it. And so we are in the process of reviewing this and planning something different. Um, uh, here you see a picture of, uh, of the uh, MVT prototypes being uh, used in, uh, in um, a test beam um, at COSI, I believe. The straw tube tracker, just outside the uh, MVD, um, it's layers of drift tubes. The uh, inner radius, 150 millimeters. The outer radius, 420. The length, uh, uh, 1,500 millimeters. So it's quite long, quite long devices here. Tubes made of very thin, 27 micrometers thin <coughs> aluminum mylar uh, with a diameter of about a centimeter. Uh, in total, to instrument the volume, uh, we'll need about 4,600 straws in arranged concentrically around here in various layers as modules, as you can see here. Um, some of which, about eight, are skewed at three degrees, so you get a, a, a Z position as well, not just the R5, of course, as you can see here, the resolution which is uh, being uh, uh, envisaged. Um, these are self-supporting straw double layers at one bar overpressure of argon CO2 which have been developed and tested uh, uh, at the uh, forschung and these te this technology will be used also uh, in other uh, uh, um, tracker devices in the forward uh, tracking direction. Uh, the material budget, of course, very, very, very low, as, as low as possible uh, uh, in this situation. is only for the total, if you go across the total, 1.3%. Uh, uh, um, the status here, again, the TDR is approved. Uh, reader prototypes have been tested in uh, beam tests. In fact, uh, uh, more than one uh, uh, types of readouts have been tested. Um, aging tests are being performed, and uh, the straw series production, the actual straws, is almost uh, complete, completed. So uh, you see here some developments, uh, the mechanical status of the modules and the layout and outline of the prototype frame, the installation is being uh, uh, also uh, uh, demonstrated. Electronics candidates, we had uh, um, two groups working at different levels, once with a ASIC and a TDC uh, uh, readout, measuring time and time over threshold, um, which has been fully qualified, has been used a lot. Uh, sampling flash ADCs were used as well, and uh, uh, which used time as well, of course, timing and the pulse area. Um, and tested also in beams, and there are further tests with Cosmics. Uh, to start with, having the experience with the ASICs and the yeah, TDC FPGAs, we will start with this kind of readout option. Um, um, and here you see an aspect of uh, such a card here reading out uh, on a test bench. Um, however, uh, for later upgrades, especially when we come to a much higher luminosity, 10 times higher, or 20 times higher after the starts up, um, we know already that uh, uh, these will need to be upgraded. Um, so there have been many testing campaigns. I'm just concentrating on the uh, one last year and this year to come to characterize further uh, the readout of the uh, uh, ASIC TDCs um, to further qualify the possibility to use uh, with time and time over threshold the uh, particle ID uh, uh, capabilities and, uh, of course, optimize operational parameters. And here you see some of the prototypes. Okay, these are, these are CAD drawings, but these actually are being built 
in order to be used in a running experiment, a GSI, the hardest experiment, which will be placed uh, over there. So these, these pink uh, uh, lines here, you see these will be the straw trackers, uh, will be installed this year and data taking should uh, already commence commission this year and uh, possibly data taking next year. So uh, some of the Panda components are being used already in uh, running experiments for the characterization. The gem tracker is a device which is in the target spectrometer. Um, it's forward tracking inside the solenoid. Tracking is in the high occupancy region, so it's the forward region, so particles which are boosted there. Uh, important uh, for large parts of physics, as we heard uh, uh, yesterday and elsewhere. Um, the detector design um, has three stations with four projections each, so radial, concentric, X, and Y. It's pretty much the, uh, 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 developed the gem foils as at CERN, although uh, uh, there was a program to try and, uh, and, and uh, uh, produce gem foils automatically in a different fashion. Uh, CERN was also a part supporting this. However, the uh, they people and the companies who were behind this didn't quite manage, and, uh, uh, um, um, and now the time is running out eventually, so we are going back to the traditional production method of the gem foils in bats um, in order to, to, to get some gem foils uh, uh, for, for our first tests, if you like. What you see is a two-dimensional demonstrator. This is from, from an older run. Um, this we have at hand, and uh, um, the uh, idea is that uh, with this demonstrator, I uh, would like to uh, uh, show uh, uh, the readout electronics is working. And unfortunately, we had a bit of a setback there. The available electronics turned out to be quite unstable, and uh, this is uh, uh, definitely something in the status which is of uh, utmost importance to come up with a uh, uh, compatible readout electronic system for this, uh, for this gem foils. Um, so uh, uh, later on, you will see in the opportunities, this is definitely something where perhaps people with experience and uh, uh, expertise in uh, this kind of readout uh, could uh, find the uh, possibility to collaborate. The forward tracker um, is tracking in the forward spectrometer, straw tube tracking, same as an STT. Um, uh, uh, showing you here how it's been arranged. It's uh, um, within, in front, and after the dipole. Okay, so various uh, chamber stations there. Um, it's uh, vertically arranged in double layers, these uh, straw tubes. Um, classically, the four projections, zero plus minus five degrees and zero to, go to get the uh, stereo angle. Um, the readout, of course, you stick with uh, uh, what you have and what is working. Uh, the ASIC with the TDC FPGAs. Um, and here again, uh, our later upgrades will be uh, necessary, of course, once we go to uh, to the, to the higher luminosity runs. The status here, uh, the TDI is approved as well, fair ECE, fairly recently. By the way, they were quite impressed with the quality of, the, uh, of this TDI. Um, test beam campaigns have been going on. Um, and since these are, these are sim the same detector technology, so they will be uh, profiting, of course, both groups in going with a full straw tube prototype in the Hades experiment at GSI. Um, in order to make the, uh, 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 some, some modules and uh, read them out there. Um, OK, so now if, if you look at this picture here, now I'm going to come up with a different transparency. It's the same picture, what you see here. There you have it. So that's a dipole again, right? I mean, the, 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 the dipole. And there you have in red this uh, forward tracker stations, one, two, three, four, so within. After the dipole, though, there has been a development um, together came out uh, uh, with, uh, um, from the LHCB community um, that uh, uh, since the LHCB at CERN will uh, uh, not use the outer track anymore, which is of similar technology, it's a, it's a drift tube technology. Um, the uh, proposed idea would be um, this perfectly functioning detector uh, for us to take modify, because it's quite big and there are some mechanical constraints as well, uh, to such extent that we could use it uh, uh, after, right after the dipole. So um, um, considering sometimes financial constraints and time constraints, this is a perfectly working detector with 
um, as far as we can say currently, with uh, uh, very little overhead, can make a huge impact in providing various uh, several uh, uh, planes there for the uh, for overtracking. Um, so in the assessment, uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, uh, already the spares, which will be delivered soon to GSI, the spares of LCB, uh, will be used to uh, uh, um, read them out and uh, uh, interface them as, as soon as possible. The TRB is one of the boards which the data acquisition and Panda is using uh, in order to see uh, um, that this is a viable solution here. The mechanics, uh, starting here from these particular frames to hold the, uh, the various modules, uh, um, this opportunity has been seized already by our colleagues uh, from Thailand, which uh, uh, fairly recently they joined and uh, um, are now uh, taking up the design and production for these kind of mechanics there of these uh, straw tubes there. All right, this is just a, uh, then a quick flash. This is the last of the tracking detectors which I had on the, uh, on the slide. It's the so-called luminosity detector. So you have a um, fairly far out from the uh, further down the uh, 11 meters down the uh, interaction point, um, several uh, 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 tracking devices which are uh, using the uh, high voltage monolithic active pixel sensors, uh, sensors which have been uh, uh, um, developed for the MU3E experiment, the PSI. Uh, they are fast, very fast, that's a, a one nanosecond uh, fast readouts, uh, and radiation hard as well. Um, but uh, um, they are very interesting for us in order to uh, measure the uh, um, scattering, uh, the scattered uh, uh, antiprotons uh, very far down the beam line and make an assessment of the uh, luminosity. Um, the status of this uh, uh, subdetector, the TDR, has been submitted to FAIR, so it's been looked at by the uh, experts there. Um, and uh, we are waiting the approval, even though there have been quite a few questions because of these, uh, uh, um, these maps, which are fairly uh, new, and uh, um, the way how they're being uh, cooled and on the diamond wafer and, and uh, how they're going to be used, there's uh, quite a few questions. But nevertheless, we're confident that this will, uh, the TDR will be uh, uh, um, uh, approved by FAIR, and uh, uh, further tests have been continued already uh, uh, with, with uh, larger type of prototype sensors, uh, FPGA readout tests, and here you see also a picture of a, uh, of a uh, uh, prototype for how the actual detector will look like within, within its vessel. All right. So um, moving on to the second section, the calorimetry. Calorimetry, um, I will skip fairly quickly through here because we have the, um, we have the luck to have my colleague uh, Kai, who will talk about the calorimetry, um, I believe, today or tomorrow in more detail. Um, notably to show, of course, where the calorimeters are, of course, in the target spectrometer around the target region. It's the barrel electromagnetic calorimeter. The forward part, still in the target spectrometer, the uh, forward end cap over here, and the backward end cap to provide 4 pi hermeticity uh, over there. And the much, much uh, uh, further out front is the uh, forward shashlik or the forward electromagnetic calorimeter. Shashlik, for those of you who know, a uh, term coined, uh, if you would, Fermilab a lot, um, because it's uh, like a shashlik, you put things on top of each other. Uh, okay, so um, here it's basically the, uh, the, the uh, one, one page of slide, okay, so the panda calorimetry is based on, on, uh, on, on the uh, lead tank state using lead tank state crystals. Um, it's a dense and fast material, very nice, very low uh, photon threshold. is a challenge to be uh, careful with your choice of your, uh, um, with, of your sensors, of your photo detectors and your discriminators, the electronics after that. Um, these, these kind of, this kind of crystal, this kind of material has been used also by the CMS experiment. Panda, though, uh, there have been two uh, further steps, further improvements. Um, the type, and this is something I believe Kai will uh, uh, allude us about, uh, the PW02 um, is two times better than the CMS. And then further, the operation, operating the calorimeter, the crystal at minus 25 degrees uh, brings us uh, further uh, two times, so it's in total four times better than CMS in the operation of the same um, kind of crystals. 
The challenges is the temperature stability because this is strongly temperature dependent. So you want to know uh, uh, um, uh, your temperature, so you have, want to have it stable to 0.1 uh, degrees uh, uh, Celsius. Um, control radiation damage, of course. There is a lot of uh, radiation there. We saw already 10 to the 14, the uh, neutron equivalent flux in the very center. Uh, but uh, for the forward part, uh, uh, in the forward region here, uh, in fact, the radiation is much higher than uh, up here. We will see the sensors are different. Uh, low noise electronics. And um, regarding the producer of the crystals, there has been a new uh, 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 producer, Crutor, which has delivered crystals and which are, which are very high quality and very quite acceptable. Um, so the readout of the uh, uh, light and then turned into electrical signal is done with the uh, avalanche photodiodes. Again, CMS had a, a particular design and then Panda went uh, through a, a sequence and then they came up with a, uh, this kind of uh, uh, design. And these are being used now throughout everywhere where APDs, large area APDs are used in Panda. This is the form factor there. So the barrel calorimeter, uh, which uh, requires uh, of the order of 11,000 uh, crystals, uses the large area APD readout. Um, and the uh, forward end cap has about 4,000 crystals. High occupancy, the center, means that they, uh, uh, these APDs are not being used, but instead we use the VPTTs, which are radiation harder, a vacuum, a photon, uh, uh, tetron, uh, uh, VPTTs, yeah, vacuum, photon, tetra tubes. And the uh, backward end cap for hermeticity use about 530 uh, uh, crystals there. Okay, so uh, a few highlights I do have. So the barrel EMC, uh, the crystal production, as I said, the new producer, Crito, um, is delivering, has delivered so far high quality crystals have been received. Um, expressions of interest, and anybody who's interested to, uh, to uh, fund uh, the rest of the crystals which are necessary to complete the barrel are always welcome. Um, APD screening, there are many APDs. So per crystal, there are two APDs being used. So there are quite a, a number of those uh, which are being produced, uh, Hamamatsu, and they have to be screened and matched in order to have similar APDs reading out uh, uh, the same crystal. Um, a facility is in uh, a full swing, full shift operation for the uh, APD screening. Uh, the alveoles, these are the holders for the uh, crystals, uh, have been all produced uh, for the, uh, and are being used um, in order to put in the, uh, the crystals in the assembly of the very first barrel electromagnetic slice, which you can see here without just the alveoles. And, but here you see already, what you don't see anymore, is the crystals underneath. And then what sticks out here are the uh, cables uh, which are delivering the signals from the APDs out. Um, so the first slice of 16 have been assembled. So that's, that's a uh, very first step, and it's a so-called first of series. And this uh, defines now and paves the way to continue with the rest of the uh, uh, slices as long as there are crystals to be put in the alveoles. Um, the backward end cap EFC uh, is, is, a, is an end cap, so, so, so the geometry there is, of course, different. Uh, the submodule design, so the submodule is like uh, uh, of this kind of shape and uh, this kind of geometry. So here you see the alveoles and the various crystals have to be cut in these shapes, of course. Um, is already uh, uh, defined as well, uh, uh, and the serious production of various parts and components are being prepared. Um, there's a new ASIC development, which has been, uh, has been ongoing, and it seems uh, quite successful. Um, there are, for the backward, uh, um, the backward end cap EMC activities at the uh, Mainz uh, Microtron, where uh, data taking uh, uh, is, been, uh, is taking place with A1 spectrometer for various high-resolution electron scattering in coincidence with hadrons. And this is something, as well, which is ongoing with a, uh, with a panda detector already. So the target spectrometer, we still have the forward end cap EMC. The status is very, very advanced. The production and assembly uh, is, is, is well ahead. You see a uh, explorer view here of the various structures and components, the uh, ring holding the uh, back plate, um, 
the uh, electronics which is in place, then special frames, the uh, uh, alveoles and the, uh, the ring which holds the crystal and the insulations. Uh, here you see pictures of the, the submodule of the actual ring which will host the uh, submodules and the uh, test stations where the uh, various submodules are being tested and uh, uh, produced and tested. So all the modules which are hosting, which are read out with the VPTTs have been produced. Uh, the ones with the APDs, uh, uh, now the APDs have been screened, but will start their production soon. Um, the uh, digitization, uh, we use ADCs, the actual ADC board electronics, uh, which are capable to uh, be read out through a versatile link, um, are also uh, in production. So uh, test stands with Cosmics are ongoing. The cooling systems are being defined. The pre-assembly is being prepared. So um, this, uh, we figure, uh, will be the first detector system to be fully assembled, uh, uh, fully assembled uh, detector system for Panda. OK. So the forward spectrometer calorimeter, they, uh, we have there the so-called shashliks, the interleaved scintillators and absorber layers. Uh, you have a, a very thin sheet of lead. Um, interleaved with uh, scintillators, the total depth by 380 layers comes to uh, about 668 centimeters. The transfer size has been defined. Um, wavelength shifting fibers are read out uh, for the uh, light collection along there, and the PMTs at the very end then uh, uh, read the photons, and then uh, uh, again, similar flash ADC technology has been used to, uh, uh, for the digitization. Um, here again, the TDR has been approved. Um, and the uh, readout boards have, have been, uh, uh, are being produced and are being tested. And uh, all the energy resolution, the time resolution so far achieved in the test beams are well within the specifications as foreseen uh, and described in the TDR. Right, so come to the particle ID now. Um, there are various places here. There's the barrel, uh, Dirk, and the time of flight. There's a similar Dirk technology, but novel. Uh, the disk over there, the target spectrometer, and of course the muon chambers in the uh, iron yoke. Um, the dipole time of flight, which is within the dipole, something which will sit in the dipole there. Forward reach, but, uh, rather later stage of the, uh, of the uh, uh, experiment. Um, the forward time of flight, the muon range system in the far end. So as you've seen before, I mean, for the target spectrometer, the forward spectrometer, you have um, Complementary detectors, uh, but not all use the same technology. And you, you will see this in particular, uh, uh, um, uh, as you've seen before, uh, depending on the environmental, but depending on the readout and the rate capabilities uh, they have to have. OK, so here's this is a slide showing the Dirk counters, right? The, the detectors who use detection of internally reflected Cherenkov light, as pioneered by Baba. Um, Cherenkov detectors, which are based on few silica uh, as radiators, and they detect the uh, patterns, which give the beat of the particles, and then uh, therefore you can do the uh, PID. In the barrel part here, you have the barrel dirk. The end cap disk dirk uh, is, is situated up front there, again, in the uh, target spectrometer. So the design for the barrel dirk is similar to the bar bar, but with significant improvements. Otherwise, it wouldn't fit at all, and it wouldn't be possible to actually operate it at all there. Um, the polar angular coverage you see here, 22 to 140. The PID goal is the uh, uh, P pi k separation uh, of at least 3 sigma up to 3.5 GV over C. It's a very beautiful detector there. Um, of course, uh, 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 GSI being in the group uh, uh, who's, the, uh, who's leading and uh, producing this uh, type of detector technology and development. Um, end cap disk dirk, that's a uh, still dirk. It's a novel type. Um, we'll see this later in a slide. It, it covers a polar angle coverage of uh, uh, 5 to 22 degrees, the forward going particles. Um, the PID goal is similar, but uh, for a bit higher momenta. Um, for the forward region. So the barrel dirk, you have a few pictures. There were quite a few optimization challenges from the bar, -bar design. Uh, um, now here, the, the dimensions, so one meter uh, um, diameter and two and a half meters length. So the use of quartz bars along uh, uh, the barrel here. And then you have a lens system to catch, to focus, if you like, the Cherenkov light onto a quartz prism, which expands the Cherenkov photons 
onto a uh, detection plane where the photons are then detected and electrical signals are being produced. Here you see a simulation. Um, these are the uh, various pixels of photon detectors, and you have a pie in there, and then you have shrank of light and being reflected within the, uh, within the uh, uh, bars. You get a, a, a picture of this sort here. Here you see various aspects of the test beams at CERN. Many test beams have been made with successively improvements on, on the uh, prototypes. And uh, uh, you can just about see here the narrow bar being uh, um, coupled into a lens. And then you have the prism here. You can see the prism here, perhaps a bit better, the prism. And through the prism, you can see the uh, front faces of the MCP PMTs, the, uh, uh, which have to be used because uh, these uh, photon detectors sit within the target spectrum, within the solenoid, so they, uh, they have to be resistant to magnetic field, uh, to magnetic field so they have to be uh, uh, still operating. Um, the TDR uh, is approved. The in-kind contracts are being signed and tendering is started. So this is very well advanced detector. And the reader is done with a uh, um, Padiva TDC type FPGA reader, which is being developed also, uh, has been used and developed uh, uh, at GSI. The NCAP disk there now is novel in the sense that you have the uh, particle impinging on, the, uh, on your radiator along here, and then the light is scattered within the short on the short lengths, all the way all the way up to the uh, to the bar, the focusing element is then focusing the uh, photons and the photons to a sensor very similar to the uh, to the barrel deck design. Um, this has been an advanced design. The TDI is submitted to FASE, and we're expecting approval anytime soon. The barrel time of flight is situated between the barrel deck and the barrel EMC. So you have there. Um, some of you, uh, high energy experiments uh, where the pre shower is usually been seeded. This is here a uh, time of flight system using scintillating tiles, uh, which uh, uh, are being read out then by uh, silicon uh, uh, photomultipliers. Um, and the, uh, the, uh, the electronics to read out those is a co development with a company uh, uh, providing ASICs for the uh, time of flight uh, PET scans. Um, a, uh, a particular challenge here is a layout of having very long PCB boards which have to be placed all along here, almost two meters long, and we have a prototype just a one meter long there. Um, the TDR has been approved, but there is a, 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 very, strong, a very strong effort uh, has to be put into uh, 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 prototyping and, uh, and uh, studying the, uh, the system further. There is a uh, forward time of flight system, but based on a more traditional, if you like, uh, um, uh, uh, detector technology using a scintillator wall, very scintillator slabs of various lengths and widths, uh, which are, of course, narrower in the, uh, in the region around the, uh, the uh, beam pipe. The beam pipe comes through because the part of the number of particles is much higher there. Um, the readout is uh, through a standard TDC FPGA or time of flight, uh, uh, time over threshold uh, uh, FPGA being done which has been produced at GSI. The state is there again. The TDR is approved. There's a lot of optimization work going on and uh, uh, to calibrate the system as well. And we are coming uh, uh, to the uh, muon detector system, of course, a large PID system. Um, the instruments, uh, uh, the uh, various detector drift tubes are being uh, put in the yoke um, so that uh, uh, you have a muon system with many layers in the yolk, in the end cap, and further out of the muon filter. Um, the status of this uh, uh, system the detector is, is uh, uh, the TDI has been approved quite a while ago. Uh, test beams at CERN have shown uh, uh, optimizations of the uh, various readout and uh, uh, PMT operations. Um, digital fronted electronics using FPGA, Arctic 7 based developments are ongoing. And here you see quite nice uh, a test beam result where the uh, PID between muon, uh, proton, and neutron can be uh, shown here. It is quite a nice distinguishable. Okay. There's a forward reach, a ring imaging shrink of counter, but this is for a later stage, later phase. Um, developments have started. There's no TDR yet, and uh, uh, this is definitely something when people are interested in contributing is something as well, which can be done because it comes in a much longer time scale. Um, a hypernuclear setup, of course, I had to flash this one up. Uh, we have the possibility, of course, to remove the inner detectors around the interaction region and uh, uh, put in uh, uh, um, 
different targets, secondary active targets to capture, cascade, and, and, and tracks um, in order to produce hypernuclei. You see a setup here where uh, um, here you have a different, different target material, and then you have the uh, germanium detectors here in order to make the uh, uh, gamma spectroscopy of this kind of setup. Of course, this would mean that the uh, uh, removal of the inner detectors uh, requires some downtime, and then uh, this has to be uh, put in place. Um, technical design report of this, again, is not yet matured. However, this is something which is uh, uh, meant to come uh, um, much later. Um, the data acquisition, I'll just flash this one because, uh, as I said at the beginning, it has to be continuous, be continuously, uh, 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 continuous acquisition. Uh, what is important here is that the, uh, uh, the detector front ends and the data concentrators from different detectors, they get the data. They're all synchronized to a synchronization system, which has been developed, uh, the soda net. Um, then further on, you have the association of those data with the burst of the, uh, the antiprotons. So you have the burst building network. And then later on, you have the different colors which are being put together here are uh, uh, um, data from the same time, as we uh, see. Um, and then uh, uh, what is very important uh, uh, here, of course, is that all this remains f as flexible as possible in order to have a programmable physics machine because the online event selection schemes are very, very important to be capable to work um, in situ. Uh, and for this, in order to go from 10 to the 7 uh, data per second to 10 to the, to 10 to the 4, events per second, um, you need to, 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 to uh, uh, use all uh, information you can have from feature extraction, cluster finding, verdicts, finding, fitting, track finding, fitting, all this in an online fashion. So there is a lot of scope for those who like to uh, uh, work on algorithms and physics online selection um, to make an impact and contribution there. Finally, the detector control system has to be put in place, of course. And this is something which we are currently uh, um, defining in strong terms. Um, we have uh, uh, gone along the lines of using the EPICS, Experimental Physical Industrial Control System, for the various reasons here you see the features, um, in a layered fashion, and uh, which can be partitioned for each of the subdetectors. And this is a TDR which is currently going through internal review. Now, the schedule. Um, how we've got through the detectors. Um, you might find it interesting. Uh, this is the schedule throughout the years um, for the uh, PANDA uh, uh, experiment, and this is the red line is today. Okay? So um, you see uh, we are in the design and construction phase. Um, later on, we move into the installation phase once the PANDA hall will become available. There are two periods of installations. At the beginning, you can install the heavy solenoid dipole supports uh, uh, things. And afterwards, when everything's been cleaned up and there's clean power in there, you can install all the detectors, of course. And then uh, uh, eventually, you start commissioning. At the very beginning, you don't have to have antiprotons for commissioning. You take any beam you have, uh, very likely protons, um, and you do commissioning with your detector, and eventually, End of 25, 26, uh, uh, physics with antiprotons can start. And this is what we term then the phase one. And most of the detectors which we've seen are for phase one. And this is the phase one setup. And we've gone through almost all of them in a very quick fashion. And then if I just flip forward, you see the phase two, right? I mean, so, oops, I can't go backward. There you go. So it's backward, it's forward. So basically, the forward reach, uh, more tracker planes. Uh, more on the gems and the disk there, which is coming into phase two. Most of the other detectors will be there already available. So uh, this is in words uh, um, saying the present status that most of the TDRs have been completely submitted, accepted. Uh, preparation for construction and use is ongoing. Sharpened physics focus and detector start sequence has been uh, 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 now uh, uh, progressed as well uh, within Panda. Um, the timelines here now written out what we've seen in the schedule. Uh, versatile physics, of course, and the shed many uh, shed light on many crystal deep hazards. And now we come to the opportunities, and this is just a two slide if you have the uh, <laughs> patient. <laughs> These are opportunities, aspects of contribution. I'll try to put something here which can show somehow reflect the situation the whole panda experiment, of course, is in. So as with any experiment, there is R&D. And still, even though we are in the, we are in the construction phase, there is scope for R&D. 
uh, partly because we have a phase schedule. There's a phase two, but even within phase one, there's a commissioning phase. Uh, detector phases one, uh, they are the TDR process. Many systems have TDRs, others don't, so there is already R&D can have an impact on the TDR, which has been now put in place. Detects for phase two, of course, and in any case, upgrades towards higher luminosity. Uh, prototype tests and developments, this is very strong, which is ongoing now in the various sections, dark detector controls. First of series, as we saw, many systems and modules have been put together first of series. A possibility to uh, uh, an aspect of, of collaborating is uh, to, 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 uh, to see uh, um, if there are any synergies in the, uh, in the first of series with what you're doing now. Um, and then, of course, production, quality assurance, quality control process of very many bits and pieces which have to be uh, uh, put together, assembled, and uh, overall integrated into the detector. And here are some, if you like, work package indicators, okay? So with this, uh, I'll leave you to, to look through this. Uh, uh, I made those green because uh, uh, they're not so important now. <laughs> the others are more important up front there, okay? Um, so it's particularly the gem tracker, which uh, regards a, uh, regarding the readout electronic sample, but any other possibility, software, detector control system, firmware, uh, embedded system programming, sensors, drivers, I mean, these are small things can make an impact in this situation where we're in now in the uh, construction and assembly of the various subsystems in Panda. Panda collaboration, you've seen this before, I would really... Uh, Hope to see uh, the Brazilian flag up here as well. And with this, I leave you with our website link. Obrigado. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to uh, <coughs> speaker and uh, this nice uh, overview of about Panda. I open for questions or comments. How you store them? Uh, I know this is very complicated, but uh, through confinement, magnetic confinement. Uh, f when they are when they are produced, they go all over the place. There, yeah, then you have to you rocks. have to confine you have to you have yeah you, you have to uh, um, catch them with a uh, magnetic magnetic uh, lens, right? So this is at the production there, and then you have bunches of them. Okay, and then you have them in bunches and f cooled in their, in their momentum phase space, and so you have the bunches, and then you can transport them with RF fields in, the, in, in, in various places, right? It's, well, you can have 10 to 11 protons, so the number of bunches Perhaps you. So the point is that we have this very high vacuum and this type of heat pipe. So you write the antiproton is something that it will annihilate, but because of the vacuum, it will not. So the only the main interaction will happen with our target system, and there it depends on how the target is that you have the annihilation there. But you can have the antiprotons for for minutes inside the ring. Yeah. Yep. I'm not sure, I, even longer, Klaus can maybe comment on that, but this, I think it's not a problem well, that you have an elation with anything else than your no. target system. Yeah, for, for, for quite some time. Yeah, yeah exactly, that's, that's the point. If there wouldn't be an experiment which accelerator physicists actually like, because then you have, don't have this disturbance of actually doing something with the beam. Uh, if you just uh, let the beam uh, flow and uh, have the normal operation, then you can store these antiprotons uh, for hours. And uh, if you have very pat uh, particular conditions, e even for days, the, the main lifetime uh, comes just from eating up the, the beam uh, in a speed where it is reproduced in the production uh, chain. So uh, that, that's the only limitation. So we could make the target different, then we eat more up, but then we also have to produce more yeah. in order to, uh, to really uh, make most efficient uh, use of everything. So it's uh, not, not really the problem that the antiprotons annihilate uh, with, uh, with the environment. Okay, more questions or comments? Short, please, because...
And uh, maybe, maybe I have a question. You mentioned some of the discrepancy between nuclear form factors, space like discussion for another library like Jefferson Lab, which is discrepancy. You mentioned it in your talk. Yeah. Some of the discrepancy, space like form factor for the nuclear. Yeah. But anyway. Okay, so it was one, one of, in the physics program. Yes. Right, okay. Right. Yeah, physics program is being defined mm -hmm. and it's been sharpened as well. But the, uh, the possibility, um, mm -hmm. well, of course, we have the, uh, the anti proton proton, so there is a possibility to go a uh, uh, time lag as well. Right. Okay, more questions or comments? If not, thanks again. To thanks. Okay, to break now, maybe 20 minutes. Or, okay. Oops. Because you mentioned the discrepancy from the